In this video, I'm going to show you how we can find the Taylor series or Maclaurin series for the functions. The Taylor series of the function f of x about point A or centered at A is f of A plus f prime of A over 1 factorial times x minus A to the power of 1 plus f double prime of a over 2 factorial times x minus a to the power of 2. The next term is f triple prime of a over 3 factorial times x minus a to the power of 3. And this pattern continues. And we can rewrite this in sigma form as sigma n from 0 to infinity and derivative of f at point a over n factorial times x minus a to the power of n. As you can see here, the Taylor series of a function is actually a power series that represents the function. And for finding the power series of a function, we have to calculate these values. The value of the function at the point A, the derivative of the function, the first derivative of the function at the point A, the second derivative, the third derivative, and so on. So for finding the Taylor series of a function, we have to calculate the derivatives of the function. And in the particular case that A, the center, is 0, we gave a special name to the Taylor series and we name it Maclaurin series. So the Maclaurin series of a function is the Taylor series of the function, but the point A is 0. So instead of having f of A, we have f of 0. We have to calculate the value of the function at 0. The next term is f prime of 0 over 1 factorial. And instead of x minus 0, we can write only x because x minus 0 is x. The next term is f double prime at 0 over 2 factorial times x squared. And the next term is f triple prime at 0 over 3 factorial x to the 3 and so on. So this is the formula for the Maclaurin series. Maclaurin series is a special case of the Taylor series. And in the sigma form we can write the Maclaurin series in the form of sigma n from 0 to infinity the nth derivative at 0 over n factorial x to the power of n. Now let's do an example. We want to find the Maclaurin series for the function f of x e to the x. The function is e to the x and we want to find the Maclaurin series of this function. For finding the Maclaurin series of a function, we have to find. For finding the Maclaurin series of a function, we have to calculate these values: f of zero, f prime of zero, f double prime of zero, and so on. For this function, f of zero is e to the zero, and e to the zero is one. Now we have to calculate derivative of this function. f prime of x, derivative of the function e to the x, is the same function. It doesn't change. So f prime at 0 is the same value, e to the 0, and e to the 0 is 1. The second derivative is also the same function, is e to the x. And so f double prime at 0 is again e to the 0, which is 1. 
as you can see for this special function all of these values are the same and so the Maclaurin series for the function e to the x is f of 0 is 1 f prime of 0 is also 1 so plus 1 over 1 factorial times x f double prime at 0 is also 1 all the derivatives are 1 times x squared And if we continue this pattern, the next term is 1 over 3 factorial times x to the 3 and so on. And in the sigma form, we can write this as sigma n from 0 to the infinity. All the derivatives, the nth derivative as at 0 is always 1. So it is 1, the numerator in all of our terms is 1 so in numerator we have only 1 and in denominator we have n factorial times x to the power of n as you can see in these terms always the power and this number are the same so we and we have x to the n in denominator we have n factor and this is the Maclaurin series of the function e to the x. So the Maclaurin series of e to the x is 1 plus 1 over 1 factorial x, 1 over 2 factorial x2, 1 over 3 factorial x3, and so on. Now we want to use the Maclaurin series of the function e to the x for finding the Maclaurin series of these functions. First, we want to find the Maclaurin series of e to the power of 2x. In two methods, we can find the Maclaurin series of e to the 2x. One way is to use the formula for the Maclaurin series again, and we have to find the derivatives of this function, and we can find the Maclaurin series. But the easier way is to use the Maclaurin series of e to the x. We know that when we have Maclaurin series of a function, we can replace x with different things like 2x, 5x, negative x, x squared, x to the 3. And so, for finding the Maclaurin series of e to the 2x, we can replace x with 2x. So simply we can find the Maclaurin series of e to the 2x. And so the Maclaurin series of e to the 2x 1 plus 1 over 1 factorial times 2x. 1 over 2 factorial times 2x squared. 1 over 3 factorial times 2x to the 3. And so on. And in the sigma form, it is in the form of 1 over n factorial. We replace x with 2x, 2x to the n. And this is the Maclaurin series of e to the 2x. If you like, you can open these brackets and write them as 4x to the 2, 8x to the 3. Or you can leave it in the original form. Also note that you can write this as 2 to the n times x to the n. And so this can be written in the form of sigma n from 0 to infinity. 2 to the n over n factorial times x to the n. Also, we want to find the Maclaurin series of this function, x to the power of 3 times e to the x. For finding the Maclaurin series of this function, note that the difference between this function and this function is that here 
e to the x is multiplied by x to the 3. So for finding the Maclaurin series of this function, we can multiply the Maclaurin series of e to the x by x to the power of 3. So easily we can find the Maclaurin series of this function. So we have to multiply every term in the Maclaurin series of e to the x by x to the 3. If we multiply 1 by x to the 3, we get x to the power of 3. If we multiply 1 over 1 factorial x times by x to the 3, we get 1 over 1 factorial x to the 4. 1 over 2 factorial x to the 5, 1 over 3 factorial x to the 6, and so on. And the sigma form of the answer is sigma n from 0 to infinity, 1 over n factorial x to the power of n plus 3. When we multiply x to the n by x to the 3, we add the powers and so we get x to the n plus n plus 3. And finally we want to find the Maclaurin series of this function x times e to the negative x2. This seems a bit harder. Actually for this one we have to do two operations. First of all note that instead of e to the x we have e to the negative x2. To convert e to the x to the e to the negative x2, first of all, we have to replace every x here in the Maclaurin series with negative x2. So first we have to find the Maclaurin series for e to the negative x2 and then we can multiply it by x. So for finding the Maclaurin series of this function, First, we have to find the Maclaurin series for e to the negative x2. For finding the Maclaurin series of e to the negative x2, we have to replace every x in here with negative x2. 1 plus 1 over 1 factorial times negative x2. 1 over 2 factorial times negative x2 squared. 1 over 3 factorial negative x2 to the 3 and so on. And the sigma is sigma n from 0 to infinity 1 over n factorial times negative x2 all to the power of n. Which we can rewrite this Maclaurin series in the form of e to the negative x2 is 1 minus plus this minus multiplies by this plus it becomes minus. 1 over 1 factorial is 1 so we have minus x2 here, negative x2 raises to the power of 2, so negative cancels, and x2 to the 2 is x4, so we have plus 1 over 2 factorial x4. But in the next term, because the power is odd, negative remains, and we have negative 1 over 3 factorial x to the 6. So in the Maclaurin series, the term alternatively becomes positive, negative. And this pattern continues. And in the sigma, this power n is for negative. Negative to the power of n is can be written as negative 1 to the n over n factorial times by x to the power of 2n. 
Now we are ready to find the Maclaurin series of this function. For finding the Maclaurin series of x times e to the negative x2, we have to multiply this by x. 1 times x is x minus x squared times x is x to the 3. The next term is 1 over 2 factorial, x to the 5 minus 1 over 3 factorial, x to the 7, and so on. And if in the general term here we multiply this by x, when we multiply x to the 2n by x we get x to the power of 2n plus 1 because the power of x here is 1 if we add the powers we get x to the 2n plus 1 so the sigma form of the Maclaurin series or the closed form of the Maclaurin series is sigma n from 0 to infinity negative 1 to the n over n factorial x to the 2n plus 1. As you see here, we started with a really simple function. We started with e to the x. And then, with the aim of the Maclaurin series of e to the x, we could find the Maclaurin series of other functions e to the 2x, x3 e to the x, x e to the negative x2. And note that finding the Maclaurin series of this function x e to the negative x2 with the original formula of the Maclaurin series, I mean this formula, is really hard. In this example, we want to find the first three non-zero terms of the Taylor series of the function cube root of x about point 8. First, let me remind you the formula of the Taylor series about point A in general. The Taylor series of a function in general is f of a plus f prime of a over 1 factorial times x minus a plus f double prime at a over 2 factorial times x minus a to the 2 and so on. In this question we want the Taylor series about point 8. So we replace a with 8 and we have this expression. We replace every a with 8. x minus 8 squared and so on. For finding the first three non-zero terms, we have to find f of 8, f prime of 8 and f double prime at 8. The function is cube root of x and for finding f of 8 we have to plug in 8 in the function. Cube root of 8 is 2. For finding derivative of cube root of x we can write it as x to the 1 term and so f prime of x is 1 third x to the power of 1 third minus 1. 1 third minus 1 is negative 2 thirds. And for finding f prime of 8, we have to plug in 8 for x. We get 1 third, 8 to the negative 2 thirds. 
8 to the power of negative 2 thirds is 1 over cube root of 8 squared. For calculating cube root of 8 squared, you can raise 8 to the 2, which is 64, and cube root of 64 is 4. This is one way that you can calculate this. The other way is to first calculate cube root of 8. Cube root of 8 is 2. Then raise the answer to the power of 2. 2 to the 2 is 4. So, this equals 1 over 4. So, we have 1 over 3 times 1 over 4, which is 1 over 12. For finding f double prime of x, we have to take derivative of f prime of x again. For finding derivative of 1 third x to the negative 2 third, we have to bring the power down. We have to multiply negative 2 third by 1 third. Negative 2 thirds times 1 third is negative 2 over 9 times by x to the power of negative 2 third minus 1. Negative 2 third minus 1 is negative 5 thirds. And we have to plug in 8 to find f double prime at 8. Negative 2 over 9 times 8 to the power of negative 5 thirds. Note that 8 to the power of negative 5 third is 1 over cube root of 8 to the 5. Cube root of 8, cube root of 8, for a moment ignore that 5, that power 5. Cube root of 8 is 2, now raise 2 to the 5 is 32. 2 to the 5 is 32. So 8 to the negative 5 third is actually 1 over 32. So this equals negative 2 over 9 times 1 over 32. If you simplify 2 from the top here with a 2 from here, 32 becomes 16. 16 times 9 in denominator is 144. So this equals to negative 1 over 144. Now that we have f of 8, f prime of 8, and f double prime of 8, we can write the Taylor series of the function about point 8. The Taylor series of the function cube root of x about point 8 is f of 8, which is 2, plus f prime of 8. f prime of 8 is 1 over 12. 1 over 12 over 1 factorial is 1 over 12. Because 1 factorial is 1. Times x minus 8. f double prime of at 8 is negative 144. Which if we divide it by 2 factorial, and 2 factorial is 2, negative 144. Divide by 2 is negative 1 over 288. So we have negative 1 over 288 times x minus 8 squared. And so on. We don't need to write the next terms because in the question we are asked to find only the three non-zero terms. 2 is the first term of the Taylor series. This expression is second term of the Taylor series, and this is the third term of the Taylor series. Let's do another example. In this question, we want to find the Taylor series of the function ln of x about point 1. 
So we want to find the Taylor series of the function ln of x centered at 1. Let's start with the formula of the Taylor series. The Taylor series of a function in general is f of a plus f prime of a over 1 factorial times x minus a plus f double prime x minus a squared and so on. Because in this question, we want to find the Taylor series of the function about point 1, so we replace every a with 1. f prime of 1 over 1 factorial times x minus 1 plus f double prime at 1 over 2 factorial times x minus 1 squared and so on. So for finding the Taylor series of this function, we have to find f of 1, f prime of 1, f double prime of 1, f triple prime of 1, and so on. f of x is ln of x, and so f of 1 is ln of 1, and we know that ln of 1 is 0. f prime of x, derivative of f of x, derivative of ln of x is 1 over x and so f prime at 1 is 1 over 1 which equals 1. For finding f double prime of x it's better to first rewrite 1 over x in the form of x to the power of negative 1 and then we can use the power rule to find derivative we bring the power negative 1 to the front and we subtract the power by 1 which we get negative 1 x to the negative 2 and now if we plug in 1 to find a double prime at 1 we have negative 1 times by 1 to the negative 2 we know that 1 to any power is 1 and 1 times negative 1 is negative 1 so this equals to negative 1 f triple prime of x the third derivative is 2 you have to multiply negative 2 by negative 1 which equals 2 x to the power of negative 2 minus 1 negative 3 and if you plug in 1 for x because 1 to any power is 1 times 2 is 2 the fourth derivative of the function is negative 6 x to the negative 4 and if we plug in 1 for x we have 1 to the negative 4 is 1 1 times negative 6 is negative 6 and so this is the fourth derivative at 1 now with these values we can write the Taylor series of this function so the Taylor series of ln of x is f of 1 f of 1 we found here is 0 so the first term is 0 so we don't need to write 0 then we have f prime of 1 which is 1 over 1 factorial and 1 factorial is also 1 so 1 over 1 is 1 so we have 1 times x minus 1 the next term is f double prime which is negative 1 over 2 factorial 2 factorial is 2 so negative 1 over 2 times x minus 1 to the 2 the next term is f triple prime at 1 which is 2 over 3 factorial 3 factorial is 6 so 2 over 6 is 1 third so we have 1 third times x minus 1 to the 3 probably now you can guess the next term note that the first term is 1 over you can think over 1 times x minus 1 the next term is negative 1 over 2 x minus 1 to the 2 and the next term is 1 over 3 x minus 1 to the 3 it seems that 
it alternatively becomes positive negative and every time the power increases by one and the denominator is also the same number so probably you can guess what is the next step but if you want to continue from here the next term is negative 6 over 4 factorial and 4 factorial if you think about it 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is 24 negative 6 over 24 is negative 1 fourth so the next term is negative 1 fourth times x minus 1 to the 4 as we expected here we had 1 over 1, negative 1 over 2, 1 over 3, negative 1 over 4. And the pattern continues. So this is the Taylor series of the function of x about point 1. And if you want, you can write it in general form, in the sigma form, sigma n from not 0, from 1 to infinity. x minus 1 to the n always in numerator we have 1 or negative 1 the first one is 1 the next one negative 1 positive 1 negative 1 so alternatively changes so denominator is n but numerator should be something like negative 1 to a power but not to the power of n to the power of n plus 1 or n minus 1 the reason that you have to put n plus 1 is that when we put 1 for n, we want the first term to be positive 1. And negative 1 to the power of 1 plus 1 is negative 1 to the 2, which is 1, as we have here. 